Hey, what's going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Happy Monday to each and every one of you. It is uh, 9.40 a.m. Central Time on uh, October the 24th of 2022. What an interesting time <laughs> to be an early adopter in this new asset class is the digital asset space. Charles Hoskinson has lost his ever-loving mind. What in the world? <laughs> it is it is it true there's it just rumor that the market a market maker from the United States Treasury is meeting with Ripple we'll get into that that is interesting to say the least the market is doing what the market does we get a chance to hear from Jeremy Hogan from Legal Briefs it's we're almost there <laughs> we are almost there I can't wait to share that with you guys as well all right, guys, listen, this is your XRP Ripple Daily News. And around zero to 10 minutes. So let's go over the total cryptocurrency market cap. I just refreshed this page. It's at 97, 970 billion, excuse me. Yeah, that's just not a great number when you consider at one time we were at 3 trillion. I hope a lot of us are in a position to buy digital assets at this particular time. I hope, certainly not financial advice, but I hope you're in a position to do so. The Bitcoin dominance is at 38.3%. That's just not a great number. Bitcoin is trading at $19,360. Ethereum is trading at $1,339. And XRP is currently trading at $8.45. Cents. Shout out to the modern investor, TMI. I hope you guys have subscribed to is one of many channels. I think he has two, I think he has three channels. The OG of the digital asset space, in my opinion, the, the, the number one content creator was sharing content about XRP before even people had channels. Uh, has been doing this thing. TMI, the modern investor. Shout out to you. I hope you are doing well, bro. The GOAT, the GOAT is TMI and the modern investor for sure, my humble opinion. So look, the market again, look, it's doing what it does, man. Uh, looking at these numbers here, he was. Uh, I watched a video from TMI earlier today, and that's why I brought him up. He was saying that um, just the, the elites of elites in in every category and every vertical are buying Bitcoin at a crazy, crazy rate. <laughs> Interesting stuff. So look, so some seven day double figure greens. He, he'll be token twenty nine percent up on the seven day. Uh, Aave is up 15 percent on the seven day, but again, when the total cryptocurrency market cap is at nine hundred and seventy something billion. And it's down from $3 trillion. You know what that is. Epimos got a lot of those tokens. Excited to have some of those. A lot or some. What do I, which one do I have? I have some of those. <laughs> EBMOS, EB, uh, EBMOS token. Not financial, but financial advice in no way. But I did participate in that ecosystem. Good to see the curved Dow token up 10% on the seven day. 89 cents. Wow. Less than a dollar for the curve token. Arbitrum's got, uh, by the way, it's got an airdrop potentially or token coming, creating their own token on the Arbitrum um, platform. Interesting to see. I'm going to try to participate in the Arbitrum ecosystem a little bit more than a half. I did provide uh, liquidity, I believe, in Arbitrum at one time, some long time ago. But let's get into some very, very interesting stuff. First, why has Charles Hoskinson lost his mind? I don't know. I don't know what's going on, Charles. This is a quote. I kind of was a little disappointed with David Schwartz and others saying a lot could be said, and it makes me sad. How about you grow a effing pair of balls, says Charles Hoskins, sent to David Schwartz, and tell your community not to be conspiratorial. Yowzers, like what in the what what's going on, Charles? <laughs> what's going on, Charles? Now there was someone in the in the comments of uh this video that I'm gonna share with you guys right here. There was some people in the comments saying some stuff, right? Ah. <sighs> Just take a listen to this whole minute and 41 seconds before I talk. Stefan Huber shared this. What's good, bro? Hope you're doing well. Context, if you listen to him, it becomes quite clear. He doesn't actually deny that there was no corruption. He essentially argues that it wouldn't do any good to cause them, to accuse them. 
because they would all go to the same parties together and have to live together despite the corruption. And this is with Charles and why he got himself in trouble, right? When he went down this, let's see if I can find a tweet. When he went down this, because there were some people trying to back him, right? And he went down this little thing of the, in, you know, entirety of the SEC. Remember when he said that? He said the, in, you know, hot, now you're trying to tell me that the entirety of the SEC is involved in a conspiracy, right? Remember when he said that? The entirety of the SEC. I remember thinking back when, when he said that, it, thinking to myself, no one said the entirety of the SEC. No one said that. But what it reminds me of is the smart people so busy trying to be smart, smart that they, they're they dumb. This dude knows that he's really, really smart, right? He knows that he's really, really a smart guy. And what he tries to do, what he tries to do is be so smart that he tries to make other people look dumb, right? That's his problem, right? Because no one said, but he took a little twist of what we were saying in the community and he twisted it to try to cover himself and saying the entirety of the SEC. And no one said that. No one said that, Charles. You said that. So he's not the he's, he he doesn't want to acknowledge the corruption. He doesn't want to acknowledge that what we're trying to do here is just provide for a level playing field. He doesn't want to acknowledge that. Why is that? Why is that? Because when you acknowledge that, you acknowledge the fact that the SEC should be looked into. When you say the SEC should be looked into, it doesn't mean okay. So what about the what about the secretaries? Uh, what about the human resource people that work at the SEC? Are we saying, are you trying to say that the XRP community is saying that the people from HR are involved in a conspiratory, some kind of conspiracy against, come on, Charles, against Ripple and XRP? Come on. No one said the entirety of the SEC. We're saying the people in charge of making decisions he knows that, but he's trying to be so smart that he comes across as being very, very dumb. Let's take a listen. In relationships, because of those comments, thousands and thousands and thousands of tweets. Oh. It was trending on Twitter, grand oh, conspiracy. Poor guy. On the thing that's going to win and focus on building bridges and relationships. Because of those comments, thousands and thousands and thousands of tweets. It was trending on Twitter, grand conspiracy. People attacked me, called me a petulant child, unprofessional, you know, and just all these just vitriol and negativeness. I kind of was a little disappointed with David Schwartz and others saying a lot could be said and, uh, well, I'm just going to say it makes me sad. How about you grow a fucking pair of balls and tell your community not to be conspiratorial? Maybe you should do that. Because at the end of the day, we all have to live in this space together. And hedging in the face of this madness doesn't solve anything. You very clearly have to say, we're here to win, yeah. and we're looking for allies to help us win because we're all in this together. Not, we're here to win, oh, by the way, the second largest cryptocurrency bribes people and conducts criminal conspiracies with government agencies. What are you doing, man? We, even if you win, you still have to kind of live in this industry. We still go to the same parties. We still do the same things. <laughs> it's just nuts. It's absolutely nuts. And that's why I said there's nothing further to gain from engaging with it. Because I respect you. I'll answer the question. And maybe, just maybe, somebody listening to this on the XRP side, if you let your blind rage and passion and anger assume for just a moment, understand that we're not exactly the enemies here. We didn't start this. We had nothing to do with this. Every statement that's ever been uttered is you're not a security. Let's fight together for. 
Oh man, it, it's sad. It's really, really sad. Uh, to this is the, you know a guy leading the project. I had a um, uh, tweet shared that someone tweeted about Charles that the co-founders of uh, Ethereum and Dan Larimer were right about Charles and that he can be very manipulative. That's kind of why, you know, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, kind of ousted him. Um, and it's very, very obvious here what he's trying to do. He's trying to twist stuff and he won't acknowledge the fact uh, that he's wrong. And then he's whining and complaining about being called out on his BS. It's just a typical, I'm so smart and everyone else is beneath me mentality that he has. And it's really, really sad. Really, really sad. Let's listen to some stuff from someone a lot smarter, with a lot more integrity, with who, who's willing to admit when they're wrong, or you know, and uh, not thinking that they're uh, everyone that they're above everyone, everyone else is beneath them. Let's listen to our guy, Jeremy Hogan from Legal Briefs, on you know, kind of summing up some stuff versus the SEC versus Ripple. First, we can see from the pleadings that Ripple is very, very confident that it can win on the Section 5 violation issue and specifically on the there is no contract here issue that it spent a lot of real estate talking about in its brief. And maybe it's confident for good reason as the SEC honestly really struggled to deal with that issue in its reply brief. I was really honestly surprised by how much it struggled. Second. Ripple says there was something shameful in the emails it was finally able to get from the SEC, but the emails will really be relevant only to Ripple's fair notice defense, which Ripple is wanting to go to a jury trial. Now, will it go to a jury trial? Uh, I don't know at this time. Ripple cites a case which apparently says that the issue is a jury issue, but that goes against what I initially believed, so I'll withhold giving an opinion on that until we see how the SEC responds in a couple weeks. But either way, the summary judgment issue on whether XRP is a security or not will be decided first. Except, and this is a remote possibility for me, but it's possible that the judge for some reason looks at the is issues in the Section 5 violation and decides that a jury trial is necessary to decide them. Now this would be a disaster because it ruins the early 2023 timeline for resolution, but I honestly don't see it happening. I'm just covering my butt by bringing it up, to be honest. But Speaking of buts, since this is crazy speculation time, what about a, a resolution of the case? Well, I'm not going to hold back here. All the cards are on the table at this point. All major issues have been decided by the judge. The emails have been handed over. The parties know exactly how strong each side's position is. If the SEC doesn't want those emails made public, between now and the end of the year is the time. Now, as I've mentioned before, Ripple would certainly love to move on from this case, and there's only one thing it requires Let's hear, hear it from Ripple's general counsel himself. We've said uh, publicly since day one that this case settles if the SEC makes clear that Ripple's sales and distributions of XRP and XRP's trading in the secondary market does not constitute a security. If they're willing to acknowledge that, the case settles and settles very, very quickly. And there you have it. And so we can safely assume that the SEC has so far not agreed to settle with the stipulation that Ripple's future sales of XRP would not be considered sales of securities. And if you think about it, Ripple really has no wiggle room on this issue, so it's up to the SEC to really decide if the case settles or not. And in that light, the worse the litigation goes for the SEC, the better the chances are. And so you have to think that at this moment in time, if I was the SEC, I'd be thinking very hard about whether this is the hill I wanted to die on. Bad facts make bad law, and there are a couple big pitfalls in this case for the SEC, but it's decision time for them, and we'll probably know shortly. But bad. bad, can you say bad case equals bad law or bad facts equals bad law? SEC is certainly up, up against it. That is what I'll question. And the biggest question of all is where does hashtag Eric Gensler lie? Does he want to take the L? Or does he want to be able to put pieces together in a settlement that allows for him to publicly claim a win? My vote is on the latter because Gary Gensler could care less about whether XRP is security or not. 
The dude wants to go to the treasury. He wants to get the nod for the United States treasury. And there's a reason for that. And speaking of the treasury, why in the world, why in the world is a market maker, quote unquote, from the treasury meeting with Ripple? Is this in fact, is this a, a fact or not? I am not sure. But this is an interesting title. Treasury market makers meeting with Ripple. An exclusive interview with Alan Staple. Alan Staple is a YouTuber. Um, interesting guy. I haven't watched a, a ton of his videos, but it's, it's interesting that uh, this meeting um, is supposed to take place. I don't believe it is actually taking place. Take a listen to this. Update, I know that you've spoken with Bob since. Where is that at and why is that market maker meeting with Ripple? What has Bob told you? What's your speculation on that? Yeah, I did ask him about it. He didn't really have a whole lot to say about it. However, I most people have seen your video. They kind of understand. Let's get the current update. I know that you've spoken with Bob since. Where is that at and why is that market maker meeting with Ripple? What has Bob told you? What's your speculation on that? Yeah, I did ask him about it. He didn't really have a whole lot to say about it. However, I he says it hasn't happened yet, but um he was kind of surprised that i was so wound up about it because i had no idea that they were working directly i i just didn't know maybe there's many xrp people out there that did i did not know well well let me backtrack six months ago i told bob about something you know the iso 222 i told him about that he didn't know anything about it so anyway A lot of things point, you look at a lot of the stuff from President Biden and all of his, you know, his, you know, he would be writing up this and writing up that. It involves the United States Treasury. We all know about Rosie Rios sitting at the board of Ripple one time, former treasurer, right? It, it, the whole market make a meeting with Ripple from the United States Treasury. Is it right? Is it true? We don't know. We do know that the Treasury is going to be involved in this new financial system. We do know that. Um, the Fed is in trouble and they're not going to be able to fix the situation. We do know that a reset is inevitable. Later on in this video, this guy uh, speaks about or talks about um, uh, the reset. It talks about the U.S. Treasury and XRP's ex escrow. And um, some type of no negotiation in reference to the escrow. Is it possible? I don't know. Here's what I do know. We've been saying this for a very, very long time. The, the, the world has a liquidity issue. The world, the globe has a liquidity issue. Top G7, G20 countries, major liquidity issue. XRP solves the liquidity issue. You can't argue that. You cannot. How we get there to solving the liquidity issue is, is another thing. Treasury, IMF taking over the escrow. We don't know, but we do know that XRP solves the liquidity issue. That we do know. How they get there is just unknown. We do know that this financial system is a debt-based financial system, and we're going to move to, it. more than likely, we're moving to an asset-based financial system. And the question is, do you own assets? Do you own assets? Do you own crypto? Do you own equities? Do you own real estate? Do you own gold? <laughs> that is the real question. Because the, the fact that the, the illiquidity is a fact. A new financial system is a FAC out of the FACT. Like we can't keep going on. The US dollar. Uh, getting ready, people, you, the nations are moving away from the U.S. dollar. That's a fact. That's what BRICS is about, moving away from SWIFT and the U.S. dollar. That is a fact that is happening. And you're talking major na nations making up the BRICS that are doing that. So what is going to be the U.S. response to that? And we said on the channel from day one, how in the world is, a, is the United States going to let a U.S.-based company and Ripple and an asset like XRP, an asset like the XRP ledger, 
an, uh, 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 an ecosystem like RippleNet being built out and ODL, how is the United, the United States going to let Japan, Singapore, and uh, uh, the ASEAN region, they're going to let all these other countries take advantage of the prowess that is Ripple Genius in Motion and its assets, its number one asset is XRP, the ILP, the XRP ledger, which has a built-in decentralized exchange, get ready to ramp up to a major auto market maker. We're going to let all the other nations of the world utilize it to improve their liquidity situation, and we are not. Remember, the liquidity, one of the big things is movement of money. The movement, how quickly the money moves. They're going to let all the other nations take advantage of it, and we're not. Makes zero sense. I don't buy it for a second. And it may, it remind, just a lot of this talk in this video reminds me of Jimmy Valley and... Um, the debt and how he talked about the United States Treasury and the benefits of XRP in terms of the debt. This guy, Alan, here talks about it as well. And it just makes sense. So we got to stop with the with the market cap crap because it doesn't matter. Market cap is just something for crypto people to get their heads around. The, the financial system could give a crap about market cap. They're big. They have bigger issues. And one of them is illiquidity, and the other is this massive debt. And XRP, the XRP ledger, solves for it. That is the bottom line, and no one can argue that. No one can argue it. All right, guys, listen, this wraps up my XRP Ripple Daily News in around zero to 10 minutes. I hope it has been of value to you. If it has, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let me know what, let me know what you think. Tell me what you think about this rumor of a market maker from the treasury meeting with Ripple. What do you think about that? Do you got some more insight? Do you know if it's more of a fact rather than a rumor? Please let me know in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe channel, uh, subscribe button if this has been of value to you. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you know whenever we go live or whenever we upload a video. I'm gonna end this one like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man, are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it.